The atomic age has moved forward at such a pace that every citizen of the world should have some comprehension, at least in comparative terms, of the extent of this development, of the utmost significance to every one of us. Well, what Eisenhower was doing was reframing the nuclear debate and shifting it from fear of nuclear weapons to the promise of the peaceful use of nuclear energy. Um, and he was essentially offering to the world that the United States and other countries with nuclear technology would help countries around the world take advantage of the peaceful atom. Uh, now, some people raised the concern even back then, wait a minute, is there really that much difference between the peaceful atom and the atom for war? Uh, the head of Israel's nuclear program at one point said there aren't really two atoms. There's, there's one atom that you can use for both things. And that was really the origin of the International Atomic Energy Agency was the notion we'll export these peaceful nuclear technologies but we'll have inspections of them to make sure they're only used for peaceful purposes. I think Atoms for Peace had both positive and negative aspects with respect to nuclear proliferation. Certainly the spread of nuclear technology, even ostensibly civilian technology, contributed to nuclear weapons programs in a number of countries. Uh, and I think actually that, as a colleague of mine at MIT has put it, it wasn't so much spreading highly enriched uranium around that was the problem. It was spreading little atomic energy commissions around uh, that was the problem. These institutions became sort of the bureaucratic base for nuclear weapons programs in some countries. And also the technology uh, spread did contribute in cases like India's uh, nuclear program, just as an example. Uh, but I think there was also a positive aspect in that by focusing countries on the civilian side of the atom and by building up an international nuclear watchdog in the form of the International Atomic Energy Agency, it helped lay the groundwork for what later became the Nuclear Nonproliferation Treaty, which had it as its basic pillars the peaceful uses of nuclear energy, limits on the spread of weapons to additional countries, and nuclear disarmament by the states that already had nuclear weapons. Well, one part of the idea at the beginning was that the International Atomic Energy Agency would have a big stock of nuclear material that it could provide uh, to countries that would come from the weapon stocks of the United States and the Soviet Union, and that never really happened. So you, there's still a, a part of the IEA statute that's sort of about the IEA as a bank for nuclear material, and that's never really happened. There's a pale shadow of it that is coming into play now with the notion of an IEA-controlled fuel bank, uh, which is just coming from uh, normal low-enriched uranium uh, rather than being drawn from the weapon stocks or what have you. And the idea of the fuel bank is that if a country decided to rely on international supply for its nuclear fuel, and if that country then at some point had a problem, some supplier that it was relying on cut, its, cut it off or something like that, then it would be able to come to the IEA and say, please help, and the IEA would have this stock of fuel that it could then uh, provide to a country. So it gives a country more confidence that it can rely on the international market for nuclear fuel and not have to make its own.